It's better for a beginner like you to learn first how to use the different hand tools and equipment. Also, you should know where to use them before they can start to build or assemble simple circuit up to complicated ones. You should know how to use multi-tester and other sophisticated equipment such as regulated power supply, signal generator, and oscilloscope. Troubleshooting is also possible. The first tool is what we call the long nose pliers, wherein it is used for holding, bending, and stretching the lead of electronic components or connecting wires. The second one is what we call the slide cutter pliers. It is used for cutting or trimming of connecting wires or terminal leads in the circuit board. We also have what we call the flat screw driver, wherein it is used to drive or fasten negative slotted screws. We also have what we call the Phillips screw driver, wherein it is used to drive or fasten positive slotted screws. The next one is what we call the soldering pencil. It is used to join two or more metal conductors with the support of soldering lead melted around it. We also have the soldering tool. It is used to unsolder unwanted parts of component in the circuit with the support of soldering pencil. For the basic electronic equipment, we have the multi-volts power supply, wherein it is used to supply the desired direct current voltages in the circuit. The next one is multi-tester. It is used for measuring resistance, voltage, and current. For the last basic electronic equipment, we have what we call the portable electronic hand drill, wherein it is used for pouring holes in a plastic chases or metal chases. Soldering is the joining of metals using a filter material of a lower melting point than that of the parent metals to be joined. The information will help you in learning basic soldering skills, solder wires to electrical connectors, splices, and terminal lugs. Here are the process on how to solder. First, heat both items by applying the soldering iron to the copper pot and the component lead. Second, continue heating and apply a few millimeters of solder, remove the iron, and allow the solder joint to cool naturally. For the last one, it only takes a second or two to make the perfect joint, which should appear shiny. Here are the following good solder joint. We have smooth, shiny, clean, concave fillet. The following are a good example now of bad sector collections or connections. For the cold solder joint, so you will now be able to see the, the hole plus the joint that is being soldered. Then the second one that can be considered bad solder connections is when it is not soldered or soldered. Here are the different soldering tools. Vice. So when we talk about vice, based on the description, you can see the, the left and the right part of the vice were in you can twist this point to tighten or to loosen up the materials that you're going to place in between these two parts of the vice soldering tools. We have the safety glasses, the solder sucker, we have soldering tools such as solder tool, diagonal cutters or the pliers, the nose pliers or the long nose. We have the solder wick, the dump sponge. Then we have the soldering iron. So those are the different soldering tools. For the tinning process, first apply solder to iron tip. 
roll tip on down sponge will be the second step. Then for the last process, properly tinned soldering iron tip. In soldering iron care and maintenance, a soldering iron must be coated with a thin coat of solder. This will allow for the transfer of heat to the workpiece. This procedure is what we call now thinning. Then we have the tip must be kept coated with a shiny layer of solder by occasionally or occasion wiping and applying solder directly to the tip. So those now are what